Hey there, it's Kevin Kennedy, and welcome to episode number 12 of Fusion Fridays. By the end of this video, you'll be able to surface model a shovel in the patch workspace. You'll learn how to do some basic surface modeling, including the extrude command, the revolve command, the trim command, and the thicken command. For this video, I'll be using one of the sample files that is located in your data panel. To get started, click on the data panel icon in the upper left hand corner and scroll down until you see the samples section. Double click on the basic training folder and scroll down until you see number 12 hyphen patch. Double click on the patch folder and then we'll double click on the shovel handle to open it up. Once open, you'll see that the sample file is read only. We'll have to make a copy of it before we can do any work. To make a copy, simply go to File, Save As, and then you can change the name or the location of the file, and then hitting that blue Save button will make a copy. To get started, we'll first just take note of what's already been done. It appears that the Fusion engineers have went ahead and created the handle of the shovel, and we have some sketch entities that we'll reference to create the rest of the surfaces. If you want to see the process of how the handle was created, then click the play button in the timeline at the bottom of your screen. The play button will step through the timeline, showing you all the different steps that the Fusion engineers took to set up this sample file. Now we'll want to switch to the patch workspace so we can start to create the shaft of the shovel. To switch to the patch workspace, simply click on the workspace dropdown list and select patch. Next, we'll want to use the extrude command to extrude this circle all the way up to the handle, which will create the shaft of the shovel. You'll find the extrude command under the create dropdown menu. The first item you'll see in the dialog box is the profile. For the profile, we'll select the circle that has already been created, and then we'll want to change the extent to to object, which will allow us to select the curved part of the handle. You'll notice that makes the extrusion run directly to the handle, and everything looks good, so we can go ahead and click OK in the dialog box. Next, we'll create the top part of the blade of the shovel. To do this, we'll want to use the revolve command to revolve this sketch around an axis. Select revolve from the create dropdown menu, then we'll have to select the profile, which is the sketch geometry that was already created for us. For the axis, we'll go ahead and use the Y axis from the origin. Toggle open the origin folder and then select the Y axis. We want this to go a little bit more than 180 degrees, and we want it to be about 5 degrees more on each side. So we'll first have to change the direction to two side. Then I'll simply drag each slider until each one is about 5 degrees more than this 180 degree line. Once the degrees are set, I'll click OK in the dialog box. Now we'll want to extend the blade out further. Holding down the shift key, I'll select all four lines that make up the edge of the blade. Then I'll select the extend feature from the modify dropdown menu. You'll notice that selecting the edges before we prompted the command went ahead and applied the selection as the edges. So now all we have to do is type out the distance. For the distance, I'll type out 150 millimeters and you'll notice it doesn't look quite right if it's set to natural. So all you have to do is change the extend type to tangent, and then we'll click OK in the dialog box. At this point, we'll want to trim away the excess part of the shaft. Select the trim tool from the modify dropdown menu. Select the blade of the shovel as the trim tool, and then you'll see if we select the excess part of the shaft, it turns red in the preview. Now the red part shows us which part will actually be trimmed away. Everything looks right, so I'll go ahead and click OK. Next, we'll want to trim the front of the blade, which will also give us a nice rounded corner to the edges. Right click and select Repeat Trim, and then select the line geometry as the trim tool. 
select the front of the blade, and once again you'll notice it turns red in the preview, showing us that it'll be trimmed away. Everything looks good, so I'll click OK in the Trim dialog box. Our shovel is just about finished. The last thing that we'll need to do is stitch all these surfaces together. Before that, you can also change the taper of the shovel if you want a slightly different look. To change the taper, simply double click on the revolve command in the timeline, and I'll go ahead and change it so each side is seven degrees past the line. Before we stitch all these surface pieces, I want you to take note of the surface bodies in the browser. Toggle open your bodies folder, and you'll notice that there are four different surface bodies. Now using the stitch command in the patch workspace will allow us to join all these different bodies together, resulting in just one surface body. Select the stitch command from the toolbar or from the modified dropdown list, and then select all four surface bodies in no particular order. I'll also want to lower the tolerance to 0.01 millimeters, and then I'll click OK. Now if you look at the bodies folder, you'll see that there is just one surface body. Because surface bodies technically have no thickness, we'll want to thicken this entire body. Select the thicken command from the create dropdown menu, then we can select all three parts to thicken at once. I'll change the thicken dimension to 2 mm and click OK. Take a look at what happened in the bodies folder. When you use the thicken command with a surface body, it will create a solid body while also leaving the original surface body. Now that we have a solid body, you're able to go back to the model workspace and use the commands available there to further modify your design in the parametric or direct modeling modes. Hopefully this gives you guys a nice intro lesson to surface modeling. You can start to see how a few sketch entities can quickly turn into a shape with the surface modeling or patch workspace. If you would like to see more surface modeling videos, then be sure to hit that thumbs up button. Also, please comment below and let me know that you would like to see more. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions at all about this tutorial or Fusion 360 questions in general, then be sure to comment them below. Hit that thumbs up icon if you learned something in this video and click subscribe followed by that little bell icon to be notified of more Fusion 360 tutorials.